Chances are you're using a DSLR or mirrorless camera to shoot some video. But don't forget about the importance of sound. While most of these cameras have a pretty decent stereo microphone inside, it's actually better to put a shotgun mic on top, without having to do it externally, of course. But if you're interested in external audio, I will post a video about that soon. I meant soon. Rode's video mic might be one of the most popular solutions. In this video, we're talking about the very popular Rode Video Mic Pro that goes for around $229 at Amazon right now. Keeping in mind that this is the right code version, I think I said it right, right? <laughs> uh, which is actually the same mount as on the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus, which is right here, which costs around $299 on Amazon right now. So let's see if the 70 extra bucks is worth it to get the Pro Plus over the Pro. And just for convenience, let's call it the Plus and the Pro, all right? Hi, my name is Felix. This is How To Creative with everything you need to create. So to make it a little more clear, I'm filming this with the two mics recording at the same time. And this to give you a better idea what both of them sound like and I will put little indicators in the top corner of the frame uh, to indicate which mic is playing at that time. Like this, and then like this. I might actually be able to use this as a stereo track as well. Just, just playing. <laughs> so both these mics are recording at about 30 centimeters from my face with a plus 20 decibel. This to keep the noise at a minimum and the preamp in the camera does not have to boost the signal. So the plus is actually 122 grams, which is slightly heavier than the Pro. The Pro is 80 grams and therefore about two thirds of the weight of the plus and it's also slightly less bulky as you can see in the video. One thing to notice is that I do like the physical switches on the back of the Pro because I can quickly feel where it's at. I can turn it off and on without actually having to look at it and I noticed that with the Pro I really have to look at these LED or LED uh, indicators. So what about power? While the Pro only supports a 9 volt battery, the Plus has several options. The first one being a rechargeable battery, the LB1. And then the second option is a micro USB cable that you can charge it with, as well as put it in a power bank to keep it running all day. And if you forgot your micro USB cable for some reason, you can also plug in or put in two AA batteries. Very convenient. One more amazing feature about the Plus is that it turns on or off with the camera. And I've heard some people, like me, that forget to turn their Pro on or off and it's just really annoying. It's one more step to think about when you're filming. It's not that big of a deal, but it's just very nice that the Plus automatically turns on or off. Also, the battery door on the Plus easily flips open well, the battery door on the Pro is a little bit more awkward. It's also not attached to it, so it's a bit weird to reattach. But if you don't forget to uh, turn your mic off, you probably won't find yourself opening that door a lot because the batteries run pretty long. Both of the mics also have a LED indicator. And with the Pro only having one with green and red, green meaning you're good to go, and red meaning you should change the batteries probably soon, the Plus has a bit more of an enhanced, advanced system, I would say. When it is charging the battery, it will show a blue blinking LED, and when you're using the battery, it will show a blue LED. Well, for example, right now it is using AA batteries, so it will show green, and when it's running out of juice, you will see red, and it will blink faster as sooner the battery runs out. If you have a couple hours, it will blink very fast, at least that's what the manual says. Regarding the cable, they both have a 3.5 millimeter mini jack. Uh, well, on the Pro it is fixed and I actually had to get it returned because of a faulty cable. But that problem won't occur on the Plus because it has a detachable cable, which I think is a pretty neat feature as well as you can put longer cables just in it without having to, uh, to get an extension cable that I'm running on right now as well. So that pretty much concludes the looks, the whole aesthetics, but what about the inside? So they both have a high pass filter to reduce the low frequencies in the recording, while the Plus does actually have a two stage high pass filter. Furthermore, the Plus also has a high frequency booster that can enhance detail and clarity in your recording uh, if you're using a dead cat, for example. This is what the high pass filter on the Pro sounds like. 
This is what the 75 Hertz high pass filter on the plus sounds like. This is what the 150 Hertz high pass filter on the plus sounds like. This is what the high frequency boost on the plus sounds like. Both mics also have a three stage gain control going from minus 10 decibel to zero to plus 20 decibels that I'm using right now. Now a little more specs. The plus has a slightly larger frequency response going from 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz, while the pro goes from 40 Hertz to 20 kilohertz. So yeah. Oh, here you can see the polar patterns and the frequency responses of both the mics that I found in the manual. Nice, right? So here comes a real game changer for me. I've been using this Rode VideoMic Pro for years, always on plus 20 gain, and the in-camera noise reduction or gain reduction to minus 10 on the GH5. The, uh, the signal is always great, but whenever a sudden audio peaks, it clips, meaning your sound data is gone. But of course you can lower the gain levels, but on the plus, when you press the power button and the decibel button at the same time, you engage, as they call it, the safety channel. Brilliant. So what the safety channel does is, of course, these two microphones are recording in mono, but um, it takes the, the regular signal and it puts it on the left channel. And then another second uh, signal with minus 10 decibels and puts it on the right channel, meaning that if your left channel clips, you can always use the backup signal. Brilliant, a real lifesaver. So that's about it. Did you make up your mind yet? If you have any idea what, what choice you're gonna pick, maybe even the newer Rode VideoMic NTG that I also wanna check out maybe in a later video. Who knows, Rode, hit me up. Also, if you have any thoughts or some, uh, some experiences you wanna share, drop them down in the description. I always love to reply to every single one of you. I really appreciate all of you taking the time to watch my videos as well as putting comments. So keep it up. For more technical details or uh, some audio samples, I really recommend you to check out the link in the description of this video where I will redirect you to the official road website with the official product page where you can check out all the different uh, sound samples and uh, more specifications if that's something you're into. Also, if you're thinking about buying one of these two microphones, make sure to use the link in my description. I will get a small fee, a small commission of that, of that sale, and it will really help to uh, making more videos like this one. So thanks for clicking. All right, that's about it. This was How to Creative. Thank you so much for spending quality time with me. And uh, yeah, see you in the next video. Bye.